going to Off Planet Radio. I'm Randy Moggins, and this is um, The Eye of the Needle. It is August 8th, 2020, and this will be an interlude show, the interlude to Lionsgate 2020. We're going to talk about the events around this particular portal that opens up actually in late July, probably on the heels of the last full moon, we begin to enter into this uh, particular sequence, which aligns our sun with the Sirius system and uh, the belt of Orion. And it is a time of high energetics. We're already starting to see a lot of things break out of this. Notably, one of them is this fire events, and we'll talk about that uh, later in this segment. I do have a guest with me today. Lindsay Hooper is going to join me and we're going to break out um, some of the numerology and various details behind the 8-8 phenomenon. Um, this, these, um, these interlude shows are largely designed to take us outside of the sequence of shows that are being presented in the Eye of the Needle podcast series. Um, the series is basically designed to break out concepts and material as I'm going through writing and organizing, researching the material for the book, Eye of the Needle 2020. And so a lot of times what happens is that things come up inside of the cycle of time and we like to sort of sit down and commemorate them. The next um, podcast that will come out will be episode seven. And we will go back into the aspects of DNA, that being the multi-dimensional aspects of DNA. And specifically chromosome number two, the 24th chromosome, the missing chromosome, and the connections to the quantum substrate of DNA, and what that means in terms of advancement of consciousness. But for today's show, we're gonna look at the lion's gate because it's that time Second segment for patrons today, we're going to go into cycles within cycles, the spiral cycles of 12, 7, and 5 years, and where we are inside of <clears throat> time as it is. And let me bring my guest up. We want to welcome our, my friend from the Ley Lines, the Atlantis Ley Lines of North Carolina, Lindsay Hooper. Welcome. Andy, how are you? Good, good. Awesome. awesome. Uh, so yeah, we have. Oh, it's a hot August, right? Um, it is. Not talking about the weather. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I, I really want to jump in to to the Lions Gate uh, for listeners who have who don't know what the Lions Gate is. And um, Randy, as as you and I. Um, find always pertinent to reiterate we are not asking you to believe what we say we are asking you to not even that just research you know form your own opinions we're not here to push our use um, your intuition exactly we're not here to push our narratives on anyone that's right uh, we are merely humans um, navigating um, the world of wonder and knowledge just like everyone else right now um Anyway, so jumping into the Lion's Gate, um, this usually occurs, um, well, th the technical portal to this Lion's Gate is on August 8th. So it, it's 8-8. It's eight, eight. Now, um, some people start feeling the effects late July um, prior, and, uh, the, and then, then they feel them as well all the way up until August 11th or 12th because the energy is usually so intense. And uh, I, I want to bring up a few things. Now, the Lionsgate theory, you could say it's a theory. You could say it's a practice. You could say it's a rich. You, you could say you could call it whatever you will. Yeah, well, it is an alignment, so... Yes, we, we it, just point that out. It, it, it is a cosmic alignment that ancient, ancient, very ancient civilizations. And we're talking about, if you can dig deep enough, you're, we're talking about um, even the Atlanteans and the Lemurians, because this is 
actually considered a new year for some ancient yes, civilizations. It's a galactic new year. Exactly, because the alignment within the cosmos and within the galaxy, okay, it's, um, it, it's, it, they say it usually lasts for about four to five days. And um, it's a vortex that, that, in theory, opens up and bringing wa- it brings in waves of intense light because it's alignment at our galactic heart center in our galaxy, our galaxy's heart center, um, with the planet Sirius and Orion and the sun being um, directly um, in line with Leo. So, therefore, uh, you know, curious enough, Sirius, Orion, which also happens to be in the location of the pyramids of Giza. Now, around this time, we experience solar flares, fires, explosions, um, a lot of solar influence and alignment. Isn't that so, interesting? Explosions. Yes. We just had this great big fire over in Beirut. This, well, this not week. only that, Randy, uh, we had uh, six within 24 hours. Six of them, but only one was at was you can find on MSM, and everyone can do their research on that. Um, also, uh, I want to bring up you, you've you've got to remember if you look back at this time in history, it, I mean, look about look look at California last year at this time and all the fires. That's right. Well, yep. So so there's a lot of fire energy that comes with this Lion's Gate. With this, with this solar influence, and a lot of of the of, of the viewers or listening listeners may be feeling uh, an extreme magnetic or pull of fluctuation within their bodies um, around the solar plexus right now. Um, so, uh, my best advice right now is just to simply, you know, ground. Just do a lot of grounding. Um, but right. The Lion's Gate, is, it's a transmutive process. It's all about action, power, and passion, as well as transformation. Sun, fire energy, it also carries Phoenix energy, rebirth, and rising from the ashes. So this is going to also activate, okay, considering this is a, quote, portal, in theory, um, it activates the collective awakening, and a time when the link, okay, hence the number eight is in the shape of a link. Um, the link is like, a, it's, it's like a link between two worlds, okay, that are supposedly the strongest on this date within these, especially, especially on the eighth, uh, within these four to five days pertinently, um, some experience downloads of wisdom, knowledge, etc., etc. Et sorry, um, it's it's like a doorway uh, that I could compare it to. In essence, that we can choose to walk through. Yet here's the thing, Randy: we have to be very careful when it comes to what we're dealing with here. Um, you don't mess around with portals. You don't mess around with, 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 with open doorways to which you're not ready to walk through. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, it, it, I it, 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 you do not have um, a very, a very strong intuition and a very solid foundation of of wisdom um, pertaining to your mind, body, and spirit and higher self, there could be some serious, serious mistakes here made. And this is why it's so important. And this is why it was, th- this was such a sacred time. It was nothing. Literally, was literally nothing serious, serious mistakes. S-I-R-I-U-S. Serious. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Um, it, it's not to be taken lightly. It is literally, in my opinion, one of, if not the most, uh, the most uh, is sacred, and, and I'm and I'll get into that in, in just a second. One of the most sacred because number one, it lasts for so long. It's not like this, you know, the solstice. It's it's very sacred as well. Yet you don't have 
the energy that you have behind behind a lion's gate and i I think i think that the lion's gate has just been kind of tossed around like oh it's so cool it's a portal that opens up yay kind of like 11 11 in a sense i don't think it's been taken seriously enough and i think that uh i I think it's it's time that humanity um it regains this knowledge of, of of what a serious doorway this opens up and and what a time especially activating the collective awakening what a time literally between these two worlds and 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 you can see it happening because people are people are awakening um now i want to get into the numerology of this i want to touch a little bit of base with this um now I will start with I will I'll start with the number eight and I will kind of go back because I, I want to bring up a few different numbers. Yet I, I want to start off with the eight because this is what we're dealing with uh, currently with the Lions Gate. Now you've got to do you, you, you don't have to, but I recommend it. Um, you know, don't p- take my word for it. Uh, research it. Uh, there, as we know. You and I both know, Randy, um, history has been rewritten numerous, infinite. (laughs) There's no, I I can't, no one can count how um, history has has been erased um, from from our knowledge and how much it's been hidden. So, okay, a long time ago, and, and the ancients knew this, the the number zero used to be um, the number of infinite possibilities. Okay, uh, infinite, the circle. Um, it used to be, the, you know, it, it, it was a symbolism of um, creation, infinite possibilities, life, death, rebirth cycles, opportunity, finite, and being unbounded. Now, that was the zero. And now they have switched the narrative and said, oh, zero is emptiness, nothingness. That's not true. That is not what the zero originally represented back in ancient times, the circle. Okay. So what they did is they sort of, uh, the, the rewriters of history, and I will get into that in a sec. Uh, they used, decided they wanted to use the number eight as the miracle infinite um you know you turn it sideways you flip it upside down you do this and it's it's still number eight no matter which kind of way you look at it now only when stacked okay only when two zeros are stacked together right on top of one another and this even deals with um you know cosmic alignment things like that portals as we were just talking about when stacked, hence, you know, the modern infinity new age, it, it, it can create an overload. So I want to be clear before I get into this. I want to be clear. I don't think the number eight is a bad, dangerous number. I'm just saying, be careful, do your research, and tread lightly when you're working with the spiritual realm. Uh, so the number eight is extremely manifesting vibration, a uh, manifesting vibration, and the potential to, um, to to remember if you aren't aware of its power and you you don't have the understanding of the number eight's vibration, it's actually has been used for centuries as being bound and as a symbol of, of being bound and entrapped, aka um, it's a highly uh, in, in my theory, it's it's almost like a highly potent labyrinth of a portal, if you can envision that. Uh, if, if you imagine yourself walking around through this eight and trying to get to get out, it is very much a labyrinth. It's a circuit. You're walking a circuit. Okay. Yes, and also um, it also represents wishful thinking. Um, you you think about how much symbology in Hollywood. How many times have you seen an eight ball in the background? This wishful thinking, this get your hopes mm-hmm. up, this, this lack of control, oh, let's just roll the dice, loss of control, lack of power. We'll just leave it up to this eight, you know? So, and then we get to the, the tarot deck, 
Okay. Now here's where it gets interesting. And we all know that the tarot goes back. We, we don't even know the dates. It, 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 we, we, man, well, I'm sure there's a few men <laughs> that do know the dates of when the tarot was introduced. Um, you look at the eight of swords, swords, which is represented by a woman who is bound and is blindfolded. Now, with the eight of swords, when it is, okay, turned upright, okay, now this is strange. When it's turned upright, which usually, you know, you think, okay, when it's upright, it means um, it, it, it's a good thing, right? Right? People would think that. No, no, actually, when the card is turned upright, it symbolizes imprisonment, restriction, paralysis and uh, helplessness now if you reverse um if you reverse it okay i think i have this right it, it may be the other way around but i think if my memory serves me serves me no, correctly, i think you're right i think you're right about anyone, this and anyone feel free to correct me if i'm wrong so um it 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 so reverse, it actually means that you are getting out of these patterns or have the potential. So when the cards reverse, it means you have the potential to take back control, experience freedom from the eight of swords and et cetera. Um, it, it, to take back control and, and let go of, of being hopeless, you know, and, and, and blindfolded and living in despair. But either way, it's still a representation of both. And, and, and just because it turns right side up and it, and it means you're, you're taking, or it turns reversed, you're taking back control. There's always the potential that you may not be able to take back control. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So yep. that's where you get into this. I, I, I call it a, a potential trap. And uh, with this this lion's gate we have to be very careful of these spiritual rituals we practice or um we things that we aren't aware of we, we really need to, sh to shield ourselves and, and and focus on where we want to go and you know eight represents you know port a portal a portal represents a timeline and the lion's gate in between these two circles represents being in between two worlds. So we have to be very focused right now under which timeline we wish to allocate ourselves into. Okay. That's, that's very pertinent right now. So with that said, um, with that said, the number eight is a very powerful number, and I, and I don't think people understand, <laughs> uh, or I, maybe, I'm, I'm not saying all people don't understand. I'm sure there are a lot out there that, that do get it and have done their research. Um, yet we have to understand that uh, the universe works in um, vibration, and it, it works in mathematics, and to everything um in the universe, there is some sort of equation and it, it goes back to numerology, numbers, vibration, energy, etc. And so what they did is, is they twisted the historic, they twisted the historical narrative um, between the eight and the zero. It was like the ultimate trick. Do you see what I'm saying? And they did this with two other, other numbers that I just would really like to bring up. And clarify for those out there who don't know, because there's this huge stigmata on the number six and on the number seven, and that really needs to be cleared up, okay? I, I think it's pertinent. Um, there are so many people scared of the number six, so many people who worship the number seven, but if we look back into history... Um, we look back into number one, the Bible is the most copyrighted book on planet Earth. It means it has been rewritten, rewritten more than any other book out there. I'm not saying Jesus Christ doesn't exist. I'm not saying the Bible is a lie. I'm not saying that. Um, there are just things that have been 
very edited. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And who owns the King James Version? Well, the British Crown as of right now. Now you get into other modern versions like the New King James and, and whoever wrote those and, and, and other modern editions. They're also granted royalties from that. I'm not going to go into who owns all that stuff. But I really do want to get into the number six and seven. Okay. So, okay. In the Bible. Let, let, me, let me just point this out. The last show that I did was I the Needle number six which okay. is the number of man. Mm-hmm. It's also the number of the atoms of the atomic structure of carbon. Right. And um, it's also said to be the perfect number. And I'm going to go into that. So, biblically, um, it took creator six days to complete the earth but on the seventh day he made man so let's think about that in genesis okay let's think about that because we have to those six days sweetheart the seventh day was the sabbath the seventh day but as far as my knowledge the seventh day that was when man was created but it took six days to create everything else okay so it now correct me if I'm wrong, listeners, viewers, but this is what I've 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 come across. Now, um, it's originally said to be the perfect number. It was actually according to um, Greek, the Greeks, the ancient Greeks. It was the symbol of Venus and the goddess of love. Um, now, you've got to also look at the six the six senses, the six sense esp clear audience etc right um six is also the number it does represent a number of completion as well and if you look at one reason they call it the perfect number and and this is referring back to your atomic structure um if you add if you add um like one plus two plus three it equals six. So six actually equals itself. The actual, it's, it's a very, again, it's a very perfect number. Okay. Now, uh, here we go into number seven. Now, s- number seven was actually picked up by the Christian churches from the Greek Pythagoreans, okay, who believe that the number seven symbolically re- pointed to the union of a deity within the cosmos, hence a historical, another historical narrative twist. Um, during the Middle Ages, as the Christian church picked this number up, um, it was regarded as having a sacred power, okay, a sacred power because it belie- they believe that the number seven the, the Greeks did, the Pythagoreans, they believed that the number seven connected them to a sacred cosmic deity. Okay. Now, so because of this, the church then adopts it, right, during these the Middle Ages, because it grants them sacred, and I want to quote this, quote, power. Okay. What did the church try to do? Gain power and control. And, and it was, you know, they went on a religious killing spree, you know, um, re- trying to gain power and, and control. Um, and, and guys, I'm, I'm not I'm not talking bad about Christianity. I'm just simply stating um, historical facts here. Um, they also adopted it as the seven cardinal virtues, the seven sacraments, and the seven deadly sins, and so on. Now, I want to quote Genesis 6, 4. <laughs> I want to tons quote of sevens. Yeah, yeah, oh, you would not believe it. Seven plagues, like seven people. seals. Yes, think about it. So, so then you get in Genesis 4.15. It said, God will deliver seven sets of vengeance against anyone who murders Cain. Then we get into the tribes of Judah, the thirteen, which is another that that that's another show. Um, 
uh, or the tribes of Israel, should I should just not Judah, the tribes of Israel, sorry. Um, and then we get into, you know, the, the seven years of famine. Um, and then this is really interesting. Okay. Which kind of made me go WTF a little bit. Um, when I learned this, um, in Leviticus, uh, Leviticus 4, 6, um, upon the animal sacrifices designed by God to atone for sin, which means lack of love. If you look at it to atone for the sin, um, upon these male bull animal sacrifices, the blood of the male bull was to be sprinkled before God seven times. All right. So then you get into the March of Jericho, right? In Joshua, you have seven priests with seven trumpets marching around Jericho seven times, causing the walls to fall so that they could murder everyone inside the walls and loot all of the gold and silver. And that's Joshua 6. 19 through 21, I think, if I'm not mistaken. You can now uh, look that up. Sounds about right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Murder in the name of seven. Looting in the name of seven. Uh, I, like I said, I may be interpreting this wrong, but there seems to be a lot less weird things going on with the number six. Okay. So, um, and, and, and then you get to Revelation. And I can't even name it is overkill with the number seven and seven is actually the number of uh, alchemical change. It's, it's the perfect alchemical balance. Ooh, uh, right and, there. And, this That's is, it. Yep. It, and, and the, the three and the four. Okay. And then you get the three times four, which equals 12. All right. And then. Which divides into goes, six. Yeah, exactly. And what goes into 12. Four times the number three, the twenty, the Trinity. Okay. So anyway, so this is why, in in theory, in my th- opinions, this is why the Cabal uses the number seven, in fact, more frequently than the number six when it comes to sacrificial dates, wars, and almost all global tragedies. Okay, all tie to a number seven. Nine times out of ten, look at Pearl Harbor. Look at everything that adds up to seven throughout history. The even coordinates. Um, you've really got to look at this stuff, guys. You, you, you know, this is this is very important. This is history that's been erased. The Earth itself is divided into seven seven seas, seven continents. Correct. Um, Correct. So you will find that the cabal and these 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 malicious beings that have been in so-called control for or erase history for quite a very long time since the fall of um, the fall of some very intelligent civilizations um, visiting Earth and living here for a bit. Um, the, those that have been in control of this historical narrative. Um, they have really, they, they, they've really, they, they've hidden things very well and they've used them very well and they've used them to their advantage. And, um, al- alchemy is also magic guys. So you look at seven, you look at alchemy, you look at magic, you look at rituals, and that's a very, very dangerous number to be messing with. Um, not dangerous, but do you see what, do you see what I'm we'll saying? Say, yeah. We'll say powerful. Power. Say powerful, Thank which you. means I, here's the thing. Thank you. Every all symbols, all icons, all sigils, all spells, anything that has to do with alchemy and magic is a duality. Thank and you. operating in duality, you have to know how to exercise power in order to properly use it. Exactly. Yes. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, dangerous just slipped out because I'm just thinking about these. Well, no, you're not wrong, not but that's <laughs> half of the equation. <laughs> Yeah, dangerous is half the equation if you don't know what you're doing. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, I, I really I, I wanted to clarify that. I, I, th- I think that was that was very important, you know. And here's the number. The thing was, you know, in, in paganism, uh, the number seven. So you, you got to look at this. And, and paganism ex- exists way before Christianity, way long before. 
doesn't take a rocket scientist to look that up or figure that out. And seven stood for magic, astrology, even the Egyptians map seven paths to heaven. Um, Iranian cats had seven lives. And Masonically, seven is referred to the theological ladder, which Jacob had his vision and saw reaching from earth to heaven. Mm, you know, reincarnation, perhaps. Um, for instance, uh, in the mysteries of uh, the Mithras in Persia, there were seven stages and or degrees of initiations, um, which occurred um, in rituals um, uh, for, you know, actually inside of temples. Um, more like caves back then um in the mysteries of brahma as well we find the reference to a ladder of seven steps so it just goes on and on and um let me tell you the number seven predates being the 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 being the bible's god's perfect number it predates that so let's just let's just remember that it's something it's really something to think about and it's really something to think and, and to really look into why do they use the number seven with these certain things? Why do they use seven more than they use six? They just put six, six, six in your face more. Okay? <laughs> That's all. Well, the entire, the, the whole entire thing about the 666 mark of the beast is completely misunderstood as well. You know, there even in Christianity, which I was part of for years, there's a lot of stretching to get to the place where you, they say that's the number of the Antichrist. It's technically the number of the beast. And right. if you look up, here's here's a little takeaway. If you look up the word monster, which is another word for beast, you will find that the word monster defines as a man. So in a sense, it's the animal aspect of the human is what you're talking about. And the signifier is the triplet of the six. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. Well said, perfectly said. And, um, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. And I think that w that's a, an amazing clarification, um, for, for the listeners and viewers. Um, so, uh, one one little tidbit I, I, I do want to assert, speaking of uh, the cosmos and uh, astrology, um, we're, we're getting into this phase now where the astrologists are kind of arguing over um, the 13th, 13 zodiac signs. You know, NASA supposedly came out and said they discovered Osephius. <laughs> so... I just have to laugh at that because NASA is the ultimate trickster. Okay. He's like, he, he, he's like the coyote. NASA is like the coyote of corporations. Okay. In in a sense, I actually don't want to insult the coyote <laughs> like that. So, um, NASA, you know, recently came out and said that they had found a new, um, astrology sign. And then this and that will, Here's the thing. Sidereal astrology has been around. We, we can't even track how long it's been around. Um, now, tr the traditional astrology, which is the, the, 12, the 12 zodiac signs, uh, it's, it's not that all you've been taught is right or wrong. Uh, it's simply that both do exist. Both do make sense, but on a different on a different level um, upon information um, um, that they convey. Um, the traditional astrology is how we perceive ourselves, the world around us, how we perceive our actions. It's kind of the above. It's kind of the outer, in a sense, or the, the mind. Okay, the, the crown, the mind, I guess you could associate it with the heart. Okay, now I would I would associate this ideal astrology with the lower chakras, the more the um the underneath. The sidereal astrology would be the underneath, what is hidden, what is hidden from us. Um 
and and here here we go again with we can use both we can use both it doesn't mean that that one is right or wrong kind of what as we spoke about as as you said randy um it, it doesn't mean that you know um that certain numbers or alchemy is is dangerous you just have to know how to use it and, and you have to know how to take the information in and analyze it and apply it yeah this is um it's the oldest science in the world is astrology and it's passed through numerous civilizations and cultures and interpretations so I tend towards more the Vedic system, which is the 13 um, houses. Yeah, this idea. And, you know, it comes under different names. This is actually, as well, the astrology of the Gnostics. And Mm -hmm. so it's it's an ancient system, but we can use both. One doesn't invalidate the other. And uh, I think it's, it's good to bring these things into play and not get too um, beholden to one system or another. There's some very accurate astrologers in all of these schools. Correct. You know, we have um, we have in particular uh, a, a belief system that's right now crumbling with this comet coming in. And not only the comet, but where we're moving to in, in, into the galaxy our, the the Earth's position, um, e- e- everything comes into play here when we're speaking of of letting go of old belief patterns. It's 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 time more than now than ever not to cling to any certain belief patterns because we've got an energy sweeping through this planet, a cosmic energy on top of other energies which i could name and go on and on for quite some time we are entering into a period of time into this eye of the needle as you speak of where if we get caught up in this one belief system and we do not leave room for letting go of the old patriarchal systems and belief systems and the witch burning systems trials you know this is where we're at we're at we're being asked to break these cycles not asked we're, we're at essentially being thrusted into breaking these traditional ways of thinking and acting and behave behaving um spiritually mentally and physically uh you sort of don't have a choice it, well you've got a choice Yet, if you... You've got a choice, but it could be a bad one. Th- thank you. And, and I, I want... And, and Randy, you know, t- speaking about astrology and, and where we are with, um, w- with going through these, the cosmos, as astrology deals with the cosmos, it deals with especially mathematics and geometry. Mm-hmm. Let's, let, let's not leave that out as well. We have to understand that astrology is a lot of geometry and equations to it. Um, so again, numbers and, uh, and alchemy. So Randy, I would love for you to elaborate a little bit about um, the, the eye of the needle and, 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 and these two kind of timeline splits, possibly a three, a third, and people having to go, some people having to go between this eye of the needle. Yeah, we're going to break that out in the next segment, by the way. Okay. So um, what, I, what I want to interject here, and this is the commonality between you and I and what, I, what we've been talking about is this comet Neowise coming in. And intuitively, I was led to know that this comet's a harbinger. Comets are very important in terms of being messengers in the skies. And that this comet Neowise, which is the new wisdom, is emblematic of the return of the feminine wisdom aspect of what Solomon himself wrote about 
as being Sophia and the return of the balanced feminine energy which brings with it the new wisdom for the new and for the new for the new energy for the new age that we are shifting into correct yes and 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 you are completely spot on with that that is that's what i've been getting as well and as i said previously we we have a choice but but we are we are being thrusted and we are being asked to to embrace this energy uh because it's coming whether you like it or not it's here <laughs> you know it's here. Here. And, and, and truthfully so, to fight against it at this point is to continue uh, really fighting against the forces of universe itself we're in a cycle right now and those who do not bend are going to break so what the feminine energy teaches us in balance to the patriarchy which has attempted to run this order this system for far too long is the blending the balance the ability to bend the ability to yield and yet at the same time remain strong and I, I think that's, you know, the quintessential takeaway from, from this energy that's coming in. It is, definitely. Um, also, keyword here is surrender. Um, let go. Uh, surrender and find, uh, surrender, find balance. Usher balance in. And, 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 and a, don't, not only usher it within, within you know your surroundings but really within um and there i i could go on and on about this 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 comet and 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 what and the most and what we're entering into and it's actually you know people are like oh i'm so tired of this co i'm so tired of this i'm tired of that and why doesn't the country why can't we just open up and this Everybody needs to cool their jets right now because this has been our problem as a species for way too long is that no one is comfortable sitting alone with themselves. They are trauma responsing all over the place. And when you have to constantly be on the go, constantly be here, constantly be there oh got to take a tri trip to disney world oh got to go on vacation oh got to go do this oh got to go shop oh got to get it, it, like running around like chickens with head, heads cut off okay that is a trauma response so it's really time the first initiative to take while not resisting the new energy. The first initiative to take is really sitting with yourself, really figuring out and working with your shadow self and working with everything that needs to be healed. Because when we refuse to heal, it not only negatively affects our lives, spiritually, mentally, and physically, it also affects those around us. It affects the entire collective. And if you do care about making a difference in this world, on this earth, and with humanity, you don't have to go accomplish anything huge and major. And you don't have to, you know, run a marathon and, and, and be a gold medalist. Your, your finite existence is enough. Because you cannot make a difference, number one, if you can't heal all the karma, ancestral karma, your own karma, this and that. If that's not healed, this life's trauma, if that's not healed, you cannot heal the world. So that's something that I really, I really think is, is pertinent um, right now. And if it means just lying down and taking a nap and meditating before falling asleep, that's a start. Who doesn't like naps, right? <laughs> so. It's a huge start. It's Again, that's part of the yielding. Exactly. It's part of letting go of control, the illusion of control. And, and look, 
you know, during this time, it's been difficult because there's a lot that we want to push back on. There's some things I'm not real happy about. Right. But at the same time, I have said this publicly and privately that there is a blessing in all of this. If people mm-hmm. would learn how to rest inside of a situation, the safest place to be is where? Inside the eye of the storm. Well, we'll just expand the, the metaphor a little bit. The safest place to be is inside of the eye of the needle now, which is a constriction process. And so, you know, all all of these energies, because we've been detailing this since, um, well, you and I did the um, Solstice show last December 21st, and it has been a constant barrage of cosmic forces coming in. The cosmos itself is working diligently right now to quicken the energies that are coming across the earth. The battle between light and dark is all part of the play. Yeah, and didn't we uh, predict most of that? <laughs> yeah, we kind of did in, in some very interesting and cryptic ways. Yeah, we saw it coming. Information into what's really a, a very loaded segment, Lindsay. Um, can't thank you enough for coming on. And you brought some amazing points to the table, things that I think people will start to consider as they listen to this. Thank you, Randy. And I, I do hope so. Uh I I'm I'm simply a vessel. That's where so all many of us are. Exactly, and I, I can't thank you enough. It's always a pleasure. I'm always honored um, to to um, to work with you. It's it's a blessing and it's an honor, and I can't thank you enough. Well, the honor is mine too for being able to have you on. Your voice is uh, a very resonant vessel for bringing things forward. And I'm sure that here in the very near future, we will have another one of these discussions. So, uh, for, for sure. Thanks for coming on. Lindsay Hooper, One Off Planet Radio. All right, that's going to do it for this segment. Segment one of the Eye of the Needle interlude show, 8-8-2020, Lionsgate. Um, if you would like to hear more of this, you can find the full archive series of the Eye of the Needle plus additional materials, printed text, articles, and interactions with like-minded people, including myself, at patreon.com forward slash Randy Moggins. And um, I thank you for joining us. Be brave as we go through the Lionsgate. This is Off Planet Radio. 